This is Rob at Higher Power Performance again. Um, little thing for uh, Rad Gen H2O. I hope you read your comments. Um, I'd like to see you get the max benefits you've gotten so far. Test and retest. Write down your numbers. And then uh, go ahead and disconnect the cell and see what happens. See if any trouble codes come up. See if your mileage goes down. Uh, this is going to help me paint a mental picture of what's going on. Um, the OBD2 is uh, a pretty fast and complex system. Um, that's why we're having a tough time making it accept this HHO. Um, little explanation here. We have uh, OBD1 over here and its main sensors are your manifold pressure sensor, your engine coolant temperature sensor, intake air temperature sensor, O2 sensor, and NOx sensor. The computer's programmed to Here's, here's stoichiometric, your perfect burn. Um, the computer is, is, is bouncing back and forth on high and low, trying to keep an average at stoich, 14.1. It does this with a pre-calculated fuel map for your cubic inches, uh, your displacement. Um, it's pre-programmed uh, for different manifold vacuum, which initial startup, it takes a barometric pressure records it and then adjust fuel. This is the number one on OBD1. Number one sensor for controlling fuel. Engine coolant temperature basically tells the computer it's cold. It'll give it more fuel at startup and whatnot. And as it warms up, it'll go into closed loop. Intake air temperature um, changes obviously for different air intake. Now all these maps are preloaded into this computer. This map is two dimensional, if you will, up and down. Um, it relies on O2 very little. Um, in, in fact, for an O2 or an EFI to change fuel mileage on an OBD1 can take thousands of miles. It's a, it has to change long-term fuel trend. And then you have a vibration sensor, a knock sensor. So if your intake air temperature is real high, you get a little pre-ignition, it'll sense the vibration, pull out some timing. Um, now OBD2, we got a different animal here. This is a three-dimensional fuel map. Take a sheet and put it over a ball and make a mountain. This X can go anywhere on that. Um, you know, OBD-1 relies on a lot of sensors. Uh, you know, your map sensor almost, you know, 90% of your fuel curve. OBD-2, you have map and mass airflow on most vehicles. Chrysler does not use the mass airflow. Um, your O2. Your crank sense, crankshaft position sensor and camshaft position sensor. Um, these two will work together and get what you call a cam and crank correlation. It can determine where the piston is on any given cylinder to, to within one degree. Um, this is how it determines a knock. Um, it also has engine coolant temperature, intake air temperature, and they also do have um, vibration sensor knock sensors, but they're they're really not uh, used that much. So we have your intake. Now at cruise on OBD2, uh, your timing before top dead center can be upwards of 50 to 60 degrees. OBD1 does the same thing, but this one can keep it there longer. That's how we're getting better fuel mileage with the newer cars. Um, it keeps cylinder pressures high, and you do this by starting this power cycle before the piston ever gets the top dead center, and then of course your power is pushing this piston back down. Well, one of the ideas I'm having why we're not being able to accept this is we're introducing this HHO, which burns it, I've heard a lot of numbers, but we'll pick 30,000 feet per second. It's lighting it before it ever gets to the power stroke. So it's coming up, we light it, and it's going to try and hold it back down. That's why some of these cars are getting negative fuel mileage with uh, HHO introduced. So people go straight for the O2 and the map, and they try and take the fuel out of the equation. Well, that'll work, but all it's doing is taking fuel from your car, and you're losing power, you're losing drivability. Um, that's why I'm trying to, hopefully you'll disconnect your cell and try this. This will tell me a lot more. Um, now the re way this detects knock is like I said before, these two sensors compare each other. In fact, all these sensors compare each other many thousands of times per second 
to create that fuel map, and it's putting that X just everywhere. Um, that's why we're having a tough time introducing it. That base program is not designed and doesn't recognize the super high flame speed that we're introducing into it. So it's going to do, it's getting confused, it's putting it everywhere. Um, and my theory is it's probably taking timing out. Now, this can happen so fast that you're not even going to see the timing come out on a scanner. Um, the computer will actually compensate and pull stuff out in nanoseconds. Um, the, uh, I lost my train of thought here a little bit. So, you know, that's one of my ideas why some of you are getting worse mileage with HHO on these newer vehicles. Um, this part of the equation, you know, this thing can tell your computer which cylinder is misfiring. A P0306 code is saying cylinder number six is misfiring. That's how you can get that information off OBD2 and not OBD1. It doesn't have that capability. And it's happening so fast you're not hearing detonation, you're not feeling it like you would with pinging and kind of a bucking on OBD-1. Um, so the HHO we know lights way faster. Now on some of the cars that are getting better fuel mileage every cylinder head has a different design and some designs actually work better than others and on your faster burning heads they're more efficient but a lot of these numbers I'm seeing positively are actually the more inefficient heads. So this introducing the HHO prior to Top Dead Center, all it's doing is more or less vaporizing that fuel and letting it, it it's, it's letting the vapors peel off the fuel to where it's used in the power stroke. So actually the poor, more poor design engines are benefiting from it. But our fast burn chambers like our newer Chevrolets and newer Chryslers and um, actually Honda doesn't have that great of flame speed so they're seeing some positives but and this is coming from a performance engine builder and this is what I'm seeing in my head going on. Um, the more information I can get from from you YouTubers um, especially if someone has access to data log live, uh, live data stream please do it. Do a 30 minute test drive. Put a flash drive in your Snap-on Modus or your OTC Genesis and uh, email me that file because I can graph everything and put two and two together and see everything that's going on. The O2 I don't think is a problem. Um, in some instances we will have more O2 due to, you know, like I said before, we're, it'll use that fuel. Well that means I'm about out of time. Um, anyways, I hope this video helps out a little bit. I'll try and make another one sooner, going a little more in depth, but this will at least open up the prop thought process, and I hope to get a lot more feedback information from everybody so I can help put this puzzle together. Thank you.